Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a casted game of Age of Empires 4 and today we've got spawning on the west side of the map in green Lucifron playing as the Rus. He'll be playing up against BCQT playing on the east side in yellow as the Holy Roman Empire. Welcome, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Nomadic Clash, a $1,000 prize pool tournament with mega random and nomad settings. And we have got the Rus versus the Holy Roman Empire. Two very strong civilizations. Now the Rus generally considered at the moment to be in a bit of a weak spot in 1v1 competitive play. Not so much on Nomad because of the fact that on Woodlines those hunting campers can really bolster your gold income and that can really boost your eco going forwards to the Feudal Age and the Castle Age. Holy Roman Empire are no surprises to eco though with the Prelate that can come out and bolster the gathering speed of these villagers by 40%. That is a huge amount. A lot of wood being gathered here by BCQT and the spawn is such that BCQT, well, he has a lot of fish to gather here. He's dropping down a dock, building up with one villager and the wood economy, which is boosted by the prelate there underneath the town center will fund those fishing ships. He's got a gold spawn there as well. So fantastic spawn there for BCQT, has food to go out to the deer packs if he needs to. But really with the shore fish that's available, I suspect he won't need to. Over on the other side of things, Fort Lucifer, he is getting a barracks up nice and early, wants to put on some pressure, probably wants to deny the dock, I suspect he scouted it, we shall see. In fact, Lucifer has docked as well, a little bit further northwest of that situation, has put down a hunting cabin as well with those two villagers to gather the shorefish. This is going to be an inter cont interesting contest because both players have gone for water. The dock is up and running for Lucifer, actually a little bit quicker, surprisingly enough. And... Uh, Wood being bolstered can, that's a situation that the Rus can take advantage of as well, actually. Especially with the wooden fortress and the double broad axe upgrade that they can often get. Combine the two together, and that is an incredibly fast gathering of wood for the Rus. The South gathering a lot of sheep there. Has opened up with multiple scouts, of course, looking to get the bounty. We didn't quite track who got what bounty, but I suspect... There's quite a lot there for Lucifer. It's actually going to be harassing villagers here on the deer pack. That is less than ideal for Beast Cutie. There are three villagers there. This spearman is going to continue the chase on this villager. Might lose this one. Spearman continues the chase on these villagers going down the south. And that's a significant bit of eco that's being idled at this early stage of the game. And I suspect that villager will go down to the spearman. I'm not sure he'll make it alive. Let's see what's happening on water because there are quite a few fishing ships out now. There are three for Beast Cutie, Lucifer. Kind of struggling on that front does have one larger fishing ship. Now these fishing ships do cost more for the Rus. And that's because of the greater efficiency that they have. They in fact don't need to drop off food to the dock. They could just fish and drop off instantaneously. And that is a... Well I mean there's not much of a travel distance here anyway. So in this scenario it doesn't make too much of a difference. But you can imagine in, in bigger situations in with bigger ponds it can certainly make a difference. What's going on on the west side of the map? There is some shore fish here as well. So that could be something that... Either player could target, more likely to be Lucifer, of course, being on that side. And this is a hotly contested area. Second Lodger fishing ship comes out for the Rus. Arkan Chapel, the landmark of choice. No real surprises there for BCQT. Placing in a nice spot near the wood line, near the deer pack as well. And it's going to be influencing the gold. So a very, very nice spot for the Arkan Chapel. For well, the Holy Roman Empire today, played by Beastie. Now, the Golden Gate is the landmark of choice for the Rus. No real surprises there. Going to be going up with five villagers. And that will help him uh, bolster the economy, make some trades, balance out the economy if he needs to. Looks like Village is going to try and drop down a gate to get through. Beastie looking to wall up that side, prevent himself from being attacked, keep the fishing eco alive. But the spearmen are on hand, and the spearmen might be able to look to try and torch down the dock. They won't get too much value because, of course, the, I suspect, you know, a, a galley or a arrow ship will be coming out very soon from this dock. Or the Holy Roman Empire. But two early spearmen doing a decent amount of harassing. And I suspect with the eco idled that they caused, the uh, three villagers on the deer pack and it's being harassing now. It probably has paid dividends in some ways. And, of course, he's got that production building to... Um, kind of dictate the pace of the game at the moment and I suspect this will force BCQT into an archery range and of course Lucifer will read the game from then on and I suspect drop down a stable. We'll see as the prelate does now garrison inside the Arkham Chapel. Lucifer's uh, spin was just about to torch that but thinks better of it. Keeping the scout active and seeing what value he can get and co macroing nicely to get to that feudal age now. He's going to get arrow slits on his dock. 
people to protect this economy. Let's go heading down the south, looking to see what value he can get, or what he can spot, what he could find. As he heads further towards that dock. Quite a few fishing ships there for BCS. Quite a nice bit of economy, eight of them. And it is indeed the stable, so this is why RTS is incredibly fun to watch and he who moves first often dictates the pace of the game, the strategy that can be involved. Usfron opened up with a barracks to get some spearmen. And uh, accompanies that with a stable, expecting archers. The archer range isn't actually put down yet, but he's just looking to build an outpost. The prelate going to heal up the uh, weakened villagers and the, probably shouldn't lose a villager here, Beastie. Might lose one, actually. We'll see. Oh, nice bit of micro there. Usfron actually switched which villager he was attacking. And he's pulling the village away. The healing rate for the Predator is pretty disgusting, actually. The outpost will go up, protect this position. Predator, we garrisons inside the Ark and Chapel. And the spearmen head away. And they survive to fight another day. Going to go towards the dock, maybe to look to see, protect that position. In case he's uh, pushed off a little bit. But it looks like Beast Cutie looking for a fast castle here. I suspect that's the case. He's got quite a few villagers on gold. Plenty of food coming in as well. I, I'm fully anticipating a fast castle. Especially with the dropping down of the outpost. Gathering, gathering some stone as well, probably for the arrow slits upgrade. Has made one drop off. Will the villagers move elsewhere? We shall see. They're actually going to do another run of stone, which he doesn't actually quite need for the arrow slits upgrade. Going to do so anyway. Experiment looking to torch down the uh, the gate. No attack ships out yet for either player, actually. Both quite content to just gather food and there was a deer uh, boar pull there by Beastie. He actually aggroed the boar to attack the villagers. Now the villagers are forced to uh, actually kill the boar. Might have done him a bit of a favour there, actually, in some ways. Well, not so much, but didn't lose a villager. And now it could potentially drop a, uh, a nice hunting cabin and gather the boar meat. And what's quite nice about this is the hunting cabin would actually gather gold from the wood passively as well. That's an option to do that because, of course, he is heavily on water. Looking to wall up the relics as well. Lucifer recognizes that the Holy Roman Empire going to the Castle Age. We'll be looking to get the relics and it will be the Regnus Cathedral, the landmark of choice. And Lucifer has the presence of mind here to start walling up those relics. There is another one here on the east. Probably very accessible there for Beastie. We shall see. Another barracks coming out and a stable for the Rus. It's so a double stable, double barracks. Lucifer looking to play a heavy feudal age actually doesn't look to be waiting too much for the castle age and that's indicated by the production buildings that have been put down the foundations are up and running there are a couple of well, there's just one galley out there now for beast cutie looking to push away those spearmen to save that gate that castle age now is in for the holy roman empire 10 minutes into the game A second dock being put down for the Rus. Walling up relics here on the west side of that lake as well. Or the river rather. There's a stable. Two of them. Now up and running. We hear the stables working as well. Knights being queued up. Early knights. Question is where are they? Where are they? There they are. Riding through over the hill. Maybe looking to snipe a, a prelate or two. Now the concern for Lucifron. Ah, I see. So the extra stone that Beast Cutie gathered was likely to be for the Springwood emplacement. And he spots this. Beast Cutie keeping his Castle Age Knight on hand. The concern for Lucifron, whilst he might have um, numbers of military out there, he doesn't have the lead advantage on that. Let's get a few charge attacks on that knight. And that Castle Age Knight will go down, actually. There's actually a nice pick-off there by Lucifron. He's going to walk away, run away from that fight, actually. But Beast Cutie might bring that knight back home to heal up with the prelate. It's not really ideal for Lucifer. He probably would have wanted to kill that unit. Instead, it's going to go down the south. Beast Cutie has the presence of mind to wall that up. That's a lot of stables. Five stables. It looks like Beast Cutie wants the mobility on the map. Prelates are now out. And yep, he's going to heal up the knight. This is what you see professional players do. They make sure they maximize their units. He's even going to go across the sacred site and gather. Yeah, he's going to capture the sacred site. I suspect the... Prelate was looking to access the relic, but we'll have to suffice with the sacred site for now, with the scout torching it. Lucifer is aware of that situation. He's heading in that direction. Doesn't have the castle in, in in for himself yet. 
it just highlights the strength of the Holy Roman Empire's economy. But the fact that Lucifer has more docks now, that could really start to play a role. Relic coming in to heal up the, uh, the knight there. And Lucifer just keeping the knights on hand to protect the two docks and has delayed the castle age time in order to do so. Behind this, it looks like he's edging there close. He's edging close to that castle age. Let's have two early knights in queue. Can age up now. Let's just see what he decides to go for the next age. He's going to go for the Abbey of the Trinity to get the warrior monks up and pick up some of the relics himself, potentially. But uh, this is very good denial of relics. That is for sure. The concern for Lucifer is that there are three prelates on the field. So these knights that are being attacked, they're being healed up. And the nice thing for the Rus is that these fortified palisade walls do have extra HP compared to their civilization counterparts. They are fortified. And that's as a result and as a balance. The fact that they don't get stone walls. Oh, Biscuiti deletes the walls. He means business. Has two galleys. He's looking to be aggressive now. And I wonder whether the Rus will convert these lodger fishing boats to attack ships. We shall see. When they do start to convert, they do actually start to move slower. We'll see. Does have Arislets in the dock, though. That will help his situation. It does take out a galley or two. And Biscuiti will lose a little bit here. Oh, he, he actually targets the other galley. That's not what he wants. Does have a demolition ship now. Looking to take this out, the Springwald, the Hulk. They should do so. Might be able to get both out, in fact. In fact, keeping the demo alive for now. There is a demolition ship for the Holy Roman Empire. Does take a good, good engagement. Takes out those two attack ships. Or well, the galley and the uh, the Hulk. The knight's moving across the map now for Lucifron. Does have that Castle Age in. Looking to get that knight upgrade to the Castle Age. And does decamp the Sacred Site. I'm surprised to see that Beast Cutie's not taking an engagement with his knights, especially with the Prelates. Playing uh, unusually passively. That's rather surprising. He does have a farming transition as well. Just surprising to see. He's actually kind of running out of fish here. And I like what Lucifer's done. He's kept the majority of this river to himself. And that's the courtesy of that dock with the Aristis in placement. He is now investing in water. He looks to be pushing ahead. He wants to take out the fishing economy for Beast Cutie. And if he does that, that is key. The food really coming online here. 1,300 food per minute here for Lucifer. Let's get the demolition ship, ship shot off there. It does do a lot of damage. They're still alive for now. And these uh, military ships will move forward to try and attack the fishing ships. We'll start to snipe them though. Especially with the Springwald. Um, the Lodger attack ship with the Springwald emplacement. There it is. One fishing ship does go down. Nice bit of micro there, but to, to get all the fishing ships is quite nice with the galley. Does look like there's an arrow slits emplacement in this dock though for Beast QT. Let's see what's happening on Lucifer's base. The knights do charge in. Here's the push for Beast QT. I was kind of mentioning how surprised he wasn't being aggressive. He is now. The spearman's in place though. There are a couple of prelates, but probably won't be enough. He's actually looking healthy for Lucifer. It doesn't appear that Beast QT has all, all of his army in one spot fighting here. Taking an engagement, I'm not sure how favourable that is really for Beastie. Not with the spears that are there. The prelates will certainly help. Does snipe a prelate, and that is huge. Losing the prelates here, not ideal for Beastie. Don't know. They don't have the movement speed that he would want. Cavalry are chasing. Does have some reinforcements with the four, five knights there. And two more prelates to join the fight. This could be the engagement that actually decides the game. But there is a lot of spearmen there, Felice on The spearmen brace. Knights do dodge the situation. Heads back to the outpost with the relic garrison inside. Sending villagers on the south to the gold mine. Walling up the southern position as well, Beastie, looking to protect that resource. Here's the engagement. Spearman edge forward a little bit. In the north, a couple of knights going to that wood line, but Lucifer has the presence of mind to keep a couple of spears there. Slowly the game is heating up. There's the Abbey of the Trinity. Does have one relic there for the Rus. Trouble for Beastie, he's losing his food economy. Does have the food economy coming in from the farms underneath the Arkham Chapel. It's certainly not as efficient as the fishing from the lodger fishing ships. Or the Rus. Switching into barracks. He's going to look to get some spearmen or maybe some lance connector himself here. Does appear to be spearmen. Beastie be investing into barracks units as well. Looking to take a head on engagement soon, you feel. Military numbers looking favourable for Lucifer. 45 to 37. Now looking to get the, sac uh, the central sacred site. Does have this palisade walls protecting that relic as well. Maybe looking to pick that up soon. We'll see, but not diving in too quickly just yet. He's quite happy the fact that he's got water, I suspect. No relics in the Regent's Cathedral itself. One in the outpost, though. 
We'll have access to that central sacred site. That'll be 100 gold per minute. This QT hasn't finished finished off the walls. It's doing it now, actually. We'll be looking up to finish those walls on the west side. We see actually upgrades coming in for the fishing ships. Extended lines, which increases the gathering rate of fishing ships by 20%, and the carry capacity by 10, which is absolutely huge for the Rus. They have a huge advantage already with the efficiency of their lodger fishing ships. And now it's going to get fishing lines as well. Knights do look to snipe off a villager or two on that wood line, but they're being chased away. Manages to get out of there. It's done a double pronged attack on the south. Nice bit of work that by Beast QT, keeping his opponent engaged in the north and then in the south with some distraction. These two knights in the northern wood line just acting as a distraction, and he got a quite a few villagers. You can see the dead bodies. At least four of them I saw. He does have water Lucifer, which is certainly in his favour. A couple of knights heading towards that gold vein. That is huge, but Lucifer will be. Taken apart there by the knights heading in that direction by Beast of QT. And looks like the Holy Roman Empire looking to get to that Imperial Age. And that could be a signal for Lucifer to be a bit more aggressive. He's picking up the relic coming home with that. Let's have two relics in the bank already with the Abbey and the Trinity. He's getting some good villager picks actually. Or spearman picks rather with the, the Logic Alley. There's the Palace of Swabia going in this kind of an odd situation actually. There's no real resources there. Um, I'm surprised to see the Palace of Swabia. It will protect the base though. It looks like the crossbow is being added here for Lucifer, and that could be huge. The ranged attack it even means that with the engagement... Oh, that's a lot of villagers going down. Is QT going to be losing a lot of villagers? Bit of a massacre here, but one thing has to be said. With the Palace of Swabia coming soon, that won't play too much of a problem. Having said that, though, look at the eco difference. The Spearman and Grace embrace, rather. And the Knights charge in, but they're taking a lot of damage. There are Predators in behind, but it does feel like this is a winning fight for Lucifer. He's fighting underneath the Arkham Chapel. And Beast QT taking the engagement does have the Knights before the Imperial Age upgrades though. So surprising, he's kind of forced into this somewhat. And Beast QT can't wait for his Imperial Age upgrades to his Knights. He's taking the engagement now and it looks like he's going to lose it. Lucifer with 41 military to 12. Beast QT losing his numbers despite having Prelates underneath the outpost. Spearman trickling in, more crossbows in the back line. It looks like crossbows have won it there for Lucifer in game number one of Nomadic Clash. Hope you guys enjoy this casted game. Game number two. You can see that by clicking on the end card screen there now. Take care and see you next time.